thing we're going to learn how to do is how to write the name of a chemical if we give you the chemical formula. Just like when you were figuring out how to write chemical formulas uh, in a previous day, there's one set of rules for ionic compounds, one set of rules for covalent compounds. So we're going to focus on the ionic ones first. And the way you'll be able to spot those, the ionic ones are always made up of metals with nonmetals, uh, covalents typically nonmetals only. Sometimes a metalloid might sneak in there. Um, if you have an ionic compound, we're always going to name the metal part first, nonmetal part second. Uh, a good example of that, NaCl. We call that sodium chloride, not chloride sodium. It just kind of sounds funny to a chemist's ear if you put the nonmetal portion first. So we're always going to call it metal first, nonmetal second. When you're coming up with your name, you look at the chemical symbols and to first determine if it is ionic or not. If you see any metals in there, you say, well, where does that metal come from? If it's from family 1A, 2A, or 3A, you just write the metal's name. So for example, if you saw potassium, K, you just write the word potassium. If you saw the symbol SR, you'd write the word strontium. Or if you saw the symbol AL, you'd write the word aluminum. If it's a transition metal, one of those guys from the D block in the center of the periodic table, just writing the element's name alone is not enough information because we need to figure out what the charge of that thing is as well. We're going to write the name of the metal followed by a Roman numeral. We'll see an example of that in just a second. The last part over here, these five, bismuth, cadmium, lead, silver, tin, or zinc. It's a little bit of a strange situation with this handful of elements. When you look at bismuth, tin, and lead, they need Roman numerals. But when you find their location, bismuth, tin, and lead on the periodic table, uh, let's pick a new color here. It's bright blue. Here's bismuth tin, and lead. These guys, they're not in the D block, right? You might think that bismuth would be minus 3 based on its column, or that tin and lead would be positive 4, maybe negative 4, based on where they're located. Turns out bismuth, tin, and lead can have multiple forms, just like those transition metals can in that D block section. So when you look up bismuth, tin, and lead on your ion sheet, there's multiple kinds of bismuth. So we'd need a Roman numeral. There's multiple kinds of lead. There's multiple kinds of tin. So just saying bismuth or lead or tin is not enough information. You might think, based on where they are on the periodic table, that that wouldn't be necessary. But it turns out it is. What are the other exceptions? Cadmium, silver, and zinc don't need Roman numerals. When you look at where cadmium, silver, and zinc are on the periodic table, cadmium, silver, and zinc, they are in that center section. You might think that they would need a Roman numeral, but it turns out that cadmium, silver, and zinc always have consistent charges, just like an alkali metal is always plus one, or an alkaline earth metal is always plus two, and therefore we don't put a Roman numeral on it because we know what the charge is. It, we don't have to do that for silver, cadmium, or zinc. Their charges are consistent. Well, here's your cadmium, always plus two, Here's your silver, always plus one, and zinc, always plus two. Now, those handful of ions don't really follow traditional patterns. The good news is, is that you have all of the strange ones on your charge sheet. You don't have to memorize that at all. 
It's just you need to know what to do with the information. What about the nonmetal piece? If the nonmetal is only one type of element, so at the ending of your chemical formula, you see Br or Cl3, just one type. Yes, there's three Cls, but it's just Cl. It's not chlorine and bromine, chlorine and iodine. It's just chlorine. Then you're going to write the name with an ide ending. If the nonmetal portion is made up of more than one type of element, so you see something that looks like this, PO4, SO3, OH, more than one type, then you need to find that ion on your ion sheet and write the name of it.